Welcome back to another episode of the Way Forward Podcast. This episode I had on Eric Coppolino. He is an investigative journalist. He has been covering environmental cover-ups, environmental catastrophes, scientific fraud for a number of years. He's super knowledgeable on all things COVID. He actually developed a really incredible COVID chronology that's on his website. I'll put that in the show notes. But he's also very, very, very knowledgeable on dioxin. He's been covering dioxin and its implications for for health and the environment for a number of years now. And I felt it was most appropriate to bring him on to discuss the situation in Ohio because we're hearing so many different conflicting reports. The mainstream media is basically not covering it at all. Then we have truthers across the spectrum saying that it's a psyop. It didn't really happen. Then some people are saying this is the worst catastrophe ever. So Eric, given that he is a truth oriented and truth-seeking individual and is really knowledgeable on dioxin, uh, I felt it was most appropriate to bring him on. Now, I got to say, I also brought on Chelsea. She was originally supposed to join us during the actual session with Eric, but she's having audio issues. She lives a few miles north of East Palestine, and I misspoke during the episode with Eric. I want to say that up front. I said that Chelsea is, uh, is downplaying this issue severely, and that's not necessarily the case. She's simply just sharing her experience living north of East Palestine, and she's not noticing uh, anything really different going on where she lives. Um, that's not to say there isn't some harmful effects happening with this dioxin and uh, uh, in the explosion that happened in East Palestine, but um, she can only share her experience from from what she's seeing with her own eyes and feeling herself. So uh, just wanted to clear that up before we got into the episode, but I felt it was appropriate to have someone who is there that is able to share their own experience, but then also someone who is very knowledgeable on dioxin and the implications for health and the environment. And um, yeah, Eric shares a perspective that... Uh, this this has the potential to be to to be massively concerning for for human health, and I say that while acknowledging we are self healing, self regenerating, uh, healing machines, and that the that the earth will heal itself. But there's just a lot of unknowns in this situation, and I know this show is called the Way Forward, and I don't want to be fear mongering. I don't want to spread unnecessary fear, but I also want to cover the truth. That's and, and it's a balance because some of these topics are inherently dark and scary. And this is one of those, especially because there's so many unknowns associated with it. But um, I felt it was appropriate to bring on Eric and then also someone who is there uh, to offer you two different perspectives so that you can form your own conclusion as you listen or watch this episode. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope this episode proves to be informative for you. And uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into it. up with a really really amazing covid chronology like incredible incredible covid chronology i don't think anyone else in the world has done that like you I mean, obviously the mainstream has there's a few mainstream sources that have claimed to do a covid chronology but it's not really a covid chronology. we list them all to show that um here look what the other guys have done <laughs> And just in case you're looking for a specific topic and they all tend to begin on january 1st 2020 and and we begin basically on january 1st 2006. yeah and that's uh the, the context that is left out that you don't leave out is the context yeah yeah the context Yeah, that context should be my context. rapper name is context <laughs> it's actually a pretty cool rapper name because that's what i <laughs> <laughs> Not that, because that's what I, I do that. And I do, I do it in my photography also. I like to shoot with short glass, get up close and show what's going on around it, but but show the thing. And with dioxin, 
I'm, I'm now circulating a, a 1956 Monsanto document, which I will pass forward to you, um, which I've uh, got here, which basically um, has, um, has Monsanto admitting the dioxin problem in, in 1956, and then, they, and then it solves the mystery of what was making their workers sick back to the 1930s. Wow. And then it also shows that they were on notice that Agent Orange, with a, which they dumped by the ton first on Vietnam and then the United States, is contaminated with, with dioxin. So here's that. I don't know if you can see that, but this yeah. is the Monsanto Chemical Company document. Do you have that on G digital form too? Uh, I do. Cool. Yeah, I'll put that yeah, in the show I, notes. Since I'm, an, since I'm old, I, I like to have things on paper, but I, it's linked from my dioxin resource. Uh, on, on all, and I'll send you the link um, so you can see it. I mean, I'm going to read this document on the air tonight. Uh, but they, they, they had this fully figured out in 1956. It's now 2023. That's nearly 70 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of chronology, and of course, we're going to get into dioxin because that's, that's what this show's about. Can, can you just walk me through as, as much as you know on the context and the chronology of exactly what happened in Ohio? Yeah, it's still coming together and and the numbers are uh, are squirming around but there was a train accident on friday night uh feb 3. the derailment itself leading to a derailment the derailment itself happened at 8 54 p.m according to the ntsb reports um and there there was a um there were reports of trouble up to half an hour before hot reports of hot boxes and um, the truck on fire underneath the underneath the train. And the way that I understand it is that there was a, a wheel bearing failure that caused a fire that then caused the axle to weaken and the train to derail. And the train was carrying numerous cars of hazardous material. Not all of them were uh, officially placarded as hazmat. But that included benzene, motor oil, um, semolina wheat, which becomes feedstock to, to hazmat and a hazmat fire. Any hydrocarbon uh, feeds the problem. And then nine carloads of chlorine-based chemicals, four carloads of PVC pellets, and to our knowledge, five, that's the number they keep giving, five carloads of tanker carloads of vinyl chloride monomer. So the monomer part is supposed to keep it stable. So vinyl chloride is the precursor to polyvinyl chloride, which is really polymerized vinyl chloride, which takes it from a liquid state, kind of li liquid verging on gaseous state to, to a solid. And they add the monomer to it to stabilize it so that it doesn't start polymerizing in the truck because the polymerization right. is an exothermic reaction and it creates heat, heat creates pressure, and so th this was the concern about the train cars blowing up. Now, my source close to the railroad industry who has had firsthand conversations with, conversations with people has said they initially mounted a proper spill response on Friday night, but called it off. The tanker trucks were activated. They would have probably needed 50 to 100 tanker trucks they would have needed every fire department in the area to keep the thing cool. And they could have, if they wanted to, got that stuff out. It would have been dangerous for everyone involved. But that is the tragic risk of being a first responder. Mm -hmm. However, what they chose to do was to um, pretty much let it go until Monday when Norfolk Southern recommended to Governor Mike DeWine, who received campaign donations from Norfolk Southern, uh, that, that he dump and burn the, f the five carloads. So they dug a ditch, they spilled it out, and they threw a road flare in. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty creative guy, and I've been thinking since this happened for a, an example of what would be comparably stupid. I mean, it, it would be on the level of uh, a, sh a mass shooter at a football game. And instead of evacuating the stadium, they just bring in the National Guard and shoot the entire crowd, hoping they're going to hit the shooter. 
And you think, why do they shoot the whole crowd? Why didn't they just evacuate the crowd and catch the shooter? I guess I've come up with my first metaphor. It took me, it took yeah, that, me was, that was a good metaphor. Two weeks, I mean, but that's the level of stupidity yeah. of, 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 of this. And so people have not really heard about dioxin unless you have a dad or granddad who was in the Vietnam War. Well, and give, give the context on this because you're, you're like the go-to guy right now on dioxin. So the all last man you, standing. Yeah. If, if you could just, just go there for a minute, you just all, all the context surrounding your understanding of dioxin. Right. Well, I mean, um, I, I heard about it the first time on my first ever investigative story at age 19, when as a uh, university student at SUNY Buffalo, I read that they were planning, the state of New York was planning to resettle the Love Canal neighborhood which was kind of like East Palestine, only the chemicals were all buried underground and they were not on fire. But it still managed to contaminate the schools and, uh, and, and then the territory of a thousand homes in a neighborhood that was probably comparable size to East Palestine. A thousand homes is probably average 3,000 uh, 3, residents. That's slightly smaller than, than East Palestine in a uh, and uh, I had a car my sophomore year, and I drove out there and made three visits to the community, and, um, and one of them met with a state official at the Love Canal Area Revitalization Association, this bullshit uh, agency made to sound like the, you know, Hondo Homeowners Association or something, and, uh, but he was really a state <laughs> flunky, and I sat there in my, in my uh, sw sweater vest and, uh, and corduroy pants and looking very uh, pre preppy, and uh, listened to him lie to me and thought, I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to let him convince me that it's safe. Mm -hmm. And he went on and on and on and on thinking, I'm sure he was pretty sure he could convince me it was safe, but he didn't know that I was talking to Lois Gibbs who had had the neighborhood evacuated five years earlier. She was a house mom at the time. And so uh, these state officials who think they're going to pull, uh, pull the wool over these, uh, let's say rural folk have a lot coming to them because uh, rural folk tend to be a lot smarter than most other people because uh, they don't have their brains cluttered by highfalutin, piled high and deep PhDs. <laughs> and, um, and so Lois was one of these working class people who organized, first organized uh, the, the homeowners, and then finally the, uh, the EPA sent officials and they invited them into the homeowners association house and took them hostage and called the white house and said that they had i mean it was a friendly kind of hostage taking with coffee served and things like that but essentially there was such a huge crowd of, of homeowners gathered around the little house where they had their office that these guys were not getting out mm. and so they got the white house excuse me on the phone and president carter declared a federal emergency at the, at the white house Wow. For sorry, at, at Love Canal. So yep. they got presidential action from that. So that was my introduction. And I didn't realize how important what I learned from Lois was until I encountered my next dioxin encounter as a grad student running a new service at SUNY New Paltz. And I can provide you with uh, some B-roll photos. I keep publishing them uh, where PCB transformers blew up. Transformers packed in a chlorinated chemical, not that different from vinyl chloride, just heavier, denser made with benzene and there was a mass contamination incident on a college campus in new paltz uh, upstate new york uh, about halfway between the city and, and albany and um i was also the well the only journalist who cared enough to stay on the story and uh, basically my coverage which went as high as the new york times and sierra magazine and the las vegas sun and all the local papers i was able to force a 50 million dollar cleanup mind you in 1990s wow. dollars of only six buildings wow. they badly cleaned five and they renovated one and the cost came to 50 million dollars and so when you hear uh, Gov uh in norfolk southern saying oh we gave them six million dollars well i don't know most places that's the cost of a couple of nice homes mm -hmm. so that's a joke yep. it is a complete insult yep. to say that so in the course of doing the new paul story I, I i met the attorneys who were suing westinghouse monsanto and general electric 
They had also had a lot of experience with Dow Chemical because these were the people who had taken on the Agent Orange issue previous to this, previous to the PCB issue, and they had managed to get the product registration canceled and extracted a huge amount of uh, information from the files of GE Westinghouse and Monsanto. There have been many, many lawsuits, including a very famous previous train wreck in the, in the late 70s in Missouri, called uh, Stur Sturgeon, Missouri, um, which led to a case. And so this is a very, very well-developed issue. The problem with the issue, though, is that uh, there's been this active effort to suppress it. And the, and the effort has included suing a journalist, burning down the homes of activists, planting two, two of them, including my friend Carol and Pat Costner of Greenpeace, had her entire document collection burned. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then a series of uh, fake articles in the New York Times, which the New York Times conspired with the CDC, a guy named Vernon Houck and a writer named uh, Keith Schneider at the New York Times, uh, and, and conspired to place a series of six articles on the front page of the New York Times telling people that dioxin was, uh, was less toxic than a week sunbathing. And you had just and published in the New York Times. So like, where, where was the flip internally with the New York Times? Obviously, It was kind of weird because it was machine. a, yeah, that's, that's a perceptive question. Uh, there was a columnist who liked me at the New York Times and he did two pieces on me. Got it. So I didn't I didn't write those, but he was aware of them. And one of them was just basic based on my initial reporting efforts. And then the, and then that column got me into every place else. I mean, it was my you know, it, it, I should print it out again. I mean, it's pretty much was my passport. Once the New York Times calls you a good investigative journal and that day in that day. Yeah. And it was bizarre because the Times at the time was also putting out all this disinformation about dioxin. But my car, my articles didn't say the word dioxin. They said the word PCBs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they ki ki kind of slipped in. And he's a columnist and a lifer, a very powerful columnist and editor at the Times. And so that's it. He, they got in. Um, and, uh, you know, the second one involved when I was um, thrown off the campus for covering the issue. I mean, these, these people stop at nothing to conceal this. Mm -hmm. they, they, they will. And, and now it is, it is about to be game on. And what I have succeeded in doing is I have uh, got the puck with the word dioxin written on it onto the ice and now people know that this issue is 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 serious and it is actually in play it is coming up at every single meeting uh, there's going to be another town hall at six o'clock on friday we're talking on friday there's going to be another town hall and um and i i have um informed enough people in the area that aaron brockovich who's kind of the star guest yeah is is going to be the um you know she's going to get questions about this and i contacted her and heard back and i said I, I need you to say the word split sampling from the podium split sampling means that when dioxin tests are done they all have to go to two labs working independently of one another and there should be a third set of samples saved and kept with proper chain of custody in case there's problems with the first two sets of samples because we know this game yeah. I, I know this game like a professional sportscaster who gets to do the Super Bowl, right? They don't put somebody up there who doesn't know football, but very few people know this game and very few people are speaking out about it. I am, I'm amazed at who we have not heard from who does know, and Brockovich is playing it down. Wow. She's playing down the dioxin issue. Wow. So she, that should be the first words out of her mouth. The thing is that once and they are this this is really like a thousand pounds of shit in a 50 pound sack they are going to do anything to prevent a single test sample going in for dioxin because once the word dioxin once there's a positive test result for dioxin the next word is evacuation mm -hmm. and once they have one they are forced to do comprehensive testing so what they're doing they're using what Lois Gibbs and others have said is the don't look, don't find, not their method of, of declaring it safe. They also test for the wrong things in the wrong places. Right now, air sampling and water sampling are irrelevant for dioxin. Water sampling is relevant for the other chemicals. And this would be bad enough without dioxin, mm -hmm. but it, it is terrible with dioxin, but they're not gonna find dioxin in water. And so they need to be doing. Correct roof. me if I'm wrong. Dioxin is is a is a 
is, is sort of a catch-all for a lot of chemicals which are environmentally impactful, right? Or am, am, I, am I incorrect in saying that? Well, here's how that works. So there's about 75 different chemicals in the dioxin group, isomers and congeners of, of chlorinated dioxin. Dioxin is also what's called a functional group in, 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 in chemistry. It's a, it's a um, let's see if I get this right. It's, it's, it's a carbon, carbon. It's a functional group with an oxygen, an oxygen, and a carbon, and a, and a carbon. Okay. But with a chlorinated dioxin, the benzenes lack on, la latch on on either side. So I'm not talking about the functional group. I'm talking about chlorinated dioxins. Hmm. And, and there are 75 isomers and congeners of those, but they, um, the, the big one is tetrachlorinated dibenzodioxin, TCDD, which is the reference by which all other toxic chemicals are, are measured. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that even when, even though dioxin itself is not intentionally manufactured as a product, it is a byproduct of all chemical manufacturing processes involving chlorine, including pulp and paper manufacturing being dumped into rivers. There's a screaming hot amount coming out of these paper mills. Uh, and then many other chemicals that, in, that have benzene ring structure mimic dioxin. So, so they, I'd imagine they, this they is coming it. specifically from vinyl chloride then, correct? Or is well, it? vinyl chloride creates dioxins. Yeah. Okay. The, the molecule, doesn't, molecule doesn't look like it, but benzenes are formed naturally in fires. Like even forest fires create benzene. Mm -hmm. And so when you've got hydrocarbons burning, you're going to get benzenes created. And then you've, they've got chlorine, chlorine burning in the same environment just nearly burning VC or PVC creates dioxins, but then they've got it burning with train car loads full of yeah, oil and yeah. benzene and other hydrocarbons. So this, there's, there's no way to describe the gravity of, of, of this mess. I, 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 I can't even, I, I look back on the, on the last two weeks and I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going mad. And then I remember what it was like for me to be on, on my campus where they're, where they're walking around in moon suits and cleaning up dormitories in moon suits and how absolutely beyond frightening that was. And here they're just putting people right back, mm -hmm. right back at the point source. And these people are going to be shocked when they see environmental uh, consultants coming in, in level A moon suits. You should not be, I, I, I mean, Trump stay three miles away. Mm -hmm. I've, I've read uh, Norfolk Southern president and others, journalists are going there. Brockovich is going to be there. I mean, I wrote in my correspondence with Erin, I said, get in and get out because you do not want to be there. I'm not sure she understands the dioxin issue. I'm not yeah. sure she knows her issues. I'm not sure she understands the dioxin issue. How, how big so would they you should imagine all be the there wearing radius Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, sorry. How, how big would you imagine the radius is uh, like from, from the actual explosion site? Because obviously out to the, at least out to plume. the East coast. Okay. I'm sure it's affecting the Great Lakes. The thing is, it's not going to be, and it's, I've heard as far south as Kentucky and as far west as central Ohio. And the thing is that one of, one of the first laws of nature is the law of diffusion, mm -hmm. which is the things move from a greater concentration to a lesser concentration. Mm -hmm. And so there is, uh, there's, that's going to take some time, but it's actually obviously happening. Part of diffusion is the tributaries go to the Ohio River, the Ohio River goes further. Plus, there's 125,000 farms in Pennsylvania and Ohio, 125,000 farms, the vast majority of which are family farms. Mm -hmm. This is impacting all of that. This will be spread around the world, and we don't know the actual spread. They're only testing for the, the precursor chemicals and, and not dioxin. If this was just some... Um, you know, volatile organic uh, compound, it wouldn't be necessarily be affecting the herd of Jersey cows. The five, mi five, I said five miles away, there's a herd of a thousand Jersey cows five miles away. Uh, there's uptake in plants, there's uptake in animals that comes out in the milk and the meat. And they're acting like there is nothing going on here. Mm -hmm. This is what's horrifying. The response for a much less spill on a college campus was far, far uh, more realistic than, than this. And I was I rode their asses for years to to bring that up to uh, some sane, reasonable uh, specifications. Hmm. And, th and there is dioxin on the ground in uh, after 9-11 in New York City, correct? Like there is dioxin associated with that. Yeah. 
because there was so much PVC in the building, there was also quite a bit of asbestos. I was in that parking garage a couple of times and, and the stuff had like, it looked like the asbestos batting on the steel beams was this thick. Who knows how thick it really was, but it, it, it looked like after a heavy snowfall hmm. was just exposed asbestos. And, and then all the PVC in the building uh, also became dioxin. Uh, but a lot of that blew out to sea, and there's not really that many farms. The prevailing winds are going to go east out toward the water. And so a lot of that just got dumped into the ocean and became part of the background level of the ocean. Here, it's inland. There's population centers all, all points east of this. Pittsburgh is right down the block. Uh, Cleveland, many different population centers are, are right there. Mm -hmm. And I've heard of people sick as far west as central Ohio, birds dead in Kentucky. Um, and so there, there's, no, there, there's no overstating the, the problem, but the risk will not be spread evenly yet mm -hmm. because we don't know the true nature of the plume. They, they never want to study this. Yeah. And they're not going to want to do medical monitoring. People are going to have to do their own medical monitoring and and every, and every time i say this place has to be evacuated and if you can get out my heart goes to these are working class families these are people with uh two three kids a couple of dogs uh, taking care of grandma or grandpa every family i've talked to is in this situation people have rental properties uh and and they're and they and they have nowhere to go hmm. what needs to happen is hundred miles away, there needs to be created a massive trailer park and the entire region needs to be located out of the area pending proper testing and a full evaluation. But anybody who says there will not be dioxins created when chlorine, polyvinyl chloride, benzene and motor oil are all burned at the same time is completely full of shit. Mm -hmm. so, so the fallout from this, uh... It goes without saying this is this is massive. Yeah, massive. it's an I would consider it an extinction level event and has changed the United States of America forever. We are used to this stuff happening everywhere else. We're used to it happening in Fukushima, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island could have been a lot worse. That was not that far away in Harrisburg, near Harrisburg, PA. That despite the severity of that crisis was fairly well contained. So that was just dodging, dodging one bullet and getting grazed by another. Uh, but people did get sick there and that plant is gone. Uh, but we're used to this happening. The really bad ones, we're used to them happening other places. And that, that's how we think in the United States. Well, that's happening there. We're okay. Yeah. No, pro no problem here. We're this uh, perfect advanced society. Well, no, this was the worst decision that could possibly have been made. And every, every measure should have been taken to prevent it. One second, real quick, Eric. Uh, Chelsea's trying to come back in. Um, let me just message her and say that we're going to have to do afterwards. It's okay. I can edit this out. I'll bring right. you And on. I don't mean to sound like Captain Hindsight from South Park, you know, the superhero who arrives and tells everyone what they should have done. You ever see Captain Hindsight on South yeah. Park? Yeah. <laughs> well, so this is foresight, not hindsight. Because imagine if they get away with this and not changing all the regulations and not doing some semblance of a cleanup, there could be 99 more of these that happen. Yeah. So why don't we stop it at one and not wait until there's one of these every 500 miles? Yeah. Completely soaking the entire country and yet another layer of, of dioxin because there's already a background layer and the people of, of East Palestine all are carrying background layer level of, of seven to 11 uh, parts per trillion in their blood fat, which can cause disease all by itself. And, and I would assume about half of them have been COVID injected. Mm -hmm. And so they are, they are taking this on a, uh, they, they, are, they are already immune compromised by the injections. And as Mike Adams pointed out, this one gets the unvaccinated. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of Amish communities in Ohio as well. Yeah. And there were, there were common sense people who knew not to put a needle in their arm. There, there are yeah. people who just remember their grandma saying, don't take any shots. You know, you know, the, some of us know, a lot of us know not to mm -hmm. take any shots. I mean, no, I'm good for Novocaine. You're going to drill my teeth. Fine. <laughs> but that's tried and true. Got a yeah. little high.
<laughs> you know, it's a, it, it, this is, this is such a tough topic, right? Because my show is titled the way forward and I tend not to be one of those people that is overly fear mongering or a black yeah. pillar only focused on the dark things that are going on. I mean, obviously I've, I've interviewed Eileen McCusick talking about biofield tuning, interviewing a lot of people who are doing brilliant things, but I, I felt it was necessary to cover this because we aren't seeing any coverage on this. And the reality is this is truly what is going on. And you're the yep. go-to expert on dioxins and, um, so could, could you talk about the, the journalistic approach to this and, and as a journalist, how frustrated are you with the lack of, of coverage on this? I mean, and obviously we know that the mainstream news sources are propaganda machines, but I like, this should be front page news everywhere. This should be the biggest story right now. And we're seeing scant coverage or only coverage amongst alternative platform so could you touch on that a little bit yeah i mean there there's a system-wide cover-up of dioxin in the in the corporate press 30 years ago when i broke the story of dioxin present on the new paul's campus because i had a uh, let's say a lab leak uh, a a a scientist a real um, lab named leak, dr right? Bri lab leak yeah Dr. Brian Bush in the New York State Wadsworth lab, who's since passed away, so I can reveal my source, who revealed the dioxin contamination problem to me because he ran the tests in early 1992. That made the statewide wire. It was picked up by all the papers. Uh, it was it was one step away from a national story, but close enough because New York, you know, all the New York papers, you know, had it in many regional papers in the area regional dailies, which were more independent back then, had it. Um, and so uh, I, I am at least impressed that people are on this new level. I mean, in, in on, you know, you're, you, you and I basically are the media. Yeah. We've, we've done what Jello Biafra said, which was become the media. Yep. Uh, so, you know, my, Dioxin resource has been shared between the two of them hundreds of times. So the word is getting out on the street level and my coverage has made its way into East Palestine and nearby communities many times in, in the past week and a half. That part is, is very positive. Um, however, let's, um, and I have no expectations of the corporate media, but when, when there's a dioxin sample that comes back positive, they're going to have to report it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell who's telling the truth on this issue by who has the word dioxin in their coverage. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. This is the virus, no virus issue. And only it's much, 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 much more obvious. And, and anyone who says there's a safe level or proposes that there's some safe exposure level is lying. There is no safe level. That's the, the, the word dioxin is synonymous with no safe level. Mm. So... The, the problem is further exacerbated by a diversity of, let's say, truthers saying that the train wreck never happened, that dioxins are not that bad, yeah. that this is some kind of a land grab in, in, the, in the region. Uh, and we're and it may still get, be get, that. And that's the thing is it may still be that in the, in the after effects of it, but yeah. this happened. Yeah, it happened and it has exactly. to be addressed. And I'm yeah. getting, uh, and, and um, the, land being, the land being grabbed is, well, they're, they're, they should have wiped out 125,000 family farms. I mean, we need ev the soil on every one of those farms has to be tested. Wow. And the milk and meat from every one of those cows has to be tested. Um, the, so this is very unlikely to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think this is why the heat needs to be kept on the situation with the word dioxin appearing in as many social media posts, subject headers, uh, Google searches mm -hmm. as, as possible because they're all going to be watching that to get a sense of whether this is a known problem. And, and I, I believe that people know about it. I've been contacted by enough people from the region and I spoke personally with Carol Van Strum, my own teacher, who's about 82 years old right now, um, but she's still on fire about this issue and uh, you know has been working on it since the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I met her 20 years into her career doing this. And so, so I've had the two ladies that were supposed to join us 
for this discussion, unfortunately had audio issues, but, um, so one of them lives in East Palestine and I don't know her perspective. I would imagine that she's, you know, sharing essentially what you're sharing, that there, there, there's not a lot of media coverage. I mean, we've seen video footage of journalists trying to get in and they weren't able to get in and they were actually like arrested. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but. Well, one guy was arrested, I think from News Nation. Okay. So Complete so horseshit. Some... Completely. Yeah, he was doing a stand-up. And, and when, he, when they said the governor was on, he, he, he shut up because he wanted to hear what the governor was saying. So there's this token journalist arrested. I was that token journalist in New Paltz. Um, but when I was arrested, it made page one of the local daily paper. Mm -hmm. College criticizes media, arrest journalists. And I knew that would happen. I refused to leave that meeting intentionally when they ordered me out of the room. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not leave unless I was under arrest. I made the choice. And uh, I knew the police chief, and he re reluctantly placed me, personally, placed me under arrest. They escorted me out of the room. And, um, and I got that in, into the press to make mm -hmm. the point that they're throwing the press out of these meetings. Yeah. So the, the citizen playbook, there's a pretty good citizen playbook to handle this also, but it has to be taken seriously. And it's very hard for people to fight because their entire lives have been thrown into chaos by this. Yeah. Their businesses are, 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 are wrecked, their property, their home property values have gone down to negative dollars. And how are they supposed to do this in 2021, 23, whatever year it is now? Yeah, my God. How are they supposed to do this? How are they, what is their leg to, to fight on Especially working class people. That's, that's the other thing too. And the, the point that I was going to make though, is that and I, I want you to touch on this, the, per, the pervasive nature of dioxin. Um, one of the ladies that we are supposed to bring on lives eight miles north of East Palestine. And she's saying that there's no issues whatsoever. This, it's not that big of a deal. So yeah, I, I just want to, what turn does that mean? You. Yeah. What does that mean? She's sure that her, her granddaughter is not going to be born with genetic damage? Yeah. This, this, this thing, is what I, yeah, exactly. the Dow Chemical study that, that the EPA conspired with Dow Chemical to suppress until it was ripped from their cold, dead hands, mm -hmm. demonstrated they had, that Dow knew about genetic damage in rats going down three generations. Mm -hmm. So the, the problem with this chemical is it's, it, it's measured in femtograms. Mm -hmm. So a femtogram is, um, well, let, let's put it this way. The, the EPA pretends there's a safe level of dioxin exposure for one's entire life. Mm -hmm. And that lifetime level of dioxin exposure is equivalent to dividing one aspirin tablet into 32 million 100,000 pieces. Wow. So one aspirin tablet weight of TCDD, right, tetrachlorodioxin, the big one, uh, is enough to have lifetime poisoning for 32 million people. So you could then therefore fit, I don't have an envelope on my desk here, but you could fit enough dioxin to, to create a lifetime body burden for the entire American population in an envelope and mail it with one snap. Wow. So the, the effects are on every level. They are, there are carcinogenic effects. There are cancer promoting effects. There are massive hormone disrupting effects, which is all the miscarriages mm -hmm. and all the sexual cancers, the lack of the reducing of sperm counts, kids born with small penis sizes um, and the endometriosis problem. I mean, how many, how many women have you met with endometriosis in your life? Have you met a few? I mean, a few. maybe they don't. A few. Right. My wife so the previously had it and then she's recovered from it. So, but, but yeah. Great. Well, that's a hormone. That's a hormone problem it requires very serious detox, but it is known that the PCBs, which are dioxin like compounds cause endometriosis. Mm -hmm. I mean, where Carol Van Strum lives, there has not been a baby born in this valley in 50 years. The valley was sprayed with agent orange, which is like roadside weed killer and forest management, all this stuff. I mean, they've been dumping this stuff on the American population for half of a century. Mm -hmm. But it is a fact that in the in the Five Rivers area near Salem, Oregon, there has not been a baby born in the Five Rivers Valley in 50 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a small rural community. They all know each other. You know, even if your neighbor's a mile away and the next one's a mile away, they all they all know each other. And that this is a fact of, of this community. And so nobody can say there's not really a... A, a problem, 
But what they're doing is they're using their children, their pregnant women, and their pets as test animals. Mm. And if that's the way they want to proceed, I can't imagine it is. And I, I can't imagine a, a, a way out. Um, I mean, I'm, uh, maybe I'm a little overprepared. I mean, I'm, I'm ready with a, I'm not a skier, but I've got one of those Thule roof racks on my car and I've got a lot of gear in, in my car and I could probably be out of here um, with my dog in half an hour and never come back. I know how bad this can be. I, I look around my musical instruments. I, I, I know the, the, the image of the viola in, in, in uh, Pripyat, uh, Ukraine is etched into my mind. I mean, the, uh, the, the photos of Chernobyl, um, you know, the homes, right? The homes. Yep. Elena yep. Filatova, this very brave uh, daughter of an engineer who goes exploring on her kind of cross rocket motorcycle, and she brings her rad meters and she suits up and she's a photographer and videographer. Th these are chilling images. Mm -hmm. But I, I regret that I'm the person who has to say this is what East Palestine should look like right now if people don't want to experiment with how much dioxin exposure they they can take every day it's getting worse for them so it, I, yeah go ahead no you go ahead yeah I, I, this isn't comprehensible this is love canal is bad enough that shit was under the ground yeah this New is Pulse, a toxic air plume that has been blown up and is yeah now blown up there. with the, the with with tons upon tons upon tons of chlorinated chemicals burning in the presence of benzene motor oil and, and chlorine amanda volmer lives across the border in canada and she said that a week afterwards week and a half after the explosion she was like her nose was tingling a little bit and she was smelling chlorine in the air and then dr cowan who yep. lives in new york uh, he has some cats and anytime he would bring his cats food, they, they always would come out to greet him every single time. And this time, roughly a week and a half after I was talking to both of them at the same time on the zoom call a week and a half later, uh, his cats will not come out or would not come outside. I haven't talked to him since they may have come outside now, but it, it, they would not come outside a week and a half yeah. after. And they're that, in that kind of thing. You have to watch very carefully. You've got to watch your power animals. Um, ben from the uh, terrain theory podcast said that his child up in New Hampshire, you know, they, they, it's terrain theory podcast. I, I, yep. I you know, I was kidding him about not going out for happy meals. Yeah. Um, they eat well. And he said that his child would only ever kids get sick. But his kid would be sick for like two and a half days, routinely bounce back, get better, done. He yep. said his kid was down for eight days. Wow. Well, this, 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 is, this, this is another thing that's, in, luckily you're hip to the no virus issue, so I can talk about this very clearly and directly with you. We know what happened with DDT in the past as it relates to polio. So I hope to God this doesn't happen, but I could sort of see this sort of spun up. I know what you're going to say, Alec. Bring yeah. it on. Yeah, maybe even amongst I've, I've the Amish this one before. Yeah, where, where they then Ohio start, virus, they're gonna have the Ohio yeah, exactly. virus. Yeah, or, exactly. Or, or COVID twenty three. Yeah, something like that, or even just COVID itself, where they start putting using PCR tests on these people who are coming in sick a month or two from yeah. now. Oh, you got COVID. Yeah, and it's another massive COVID outbreak in that region amongst the Amish community, and it's because they didn't go get the vaccine, which is why they're experiencing the outbreak. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, nothing like this has ever happened, though comparable would be the only comparable situations of a massive point source release were Fukushima and Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. The spills that have happened in the, I'm changing the subject slightly, but we have nothing to compare this to. There's no precedent yeah. for this. Yeah. Even when, when the train cars spilled and did not catch fire and dioxin was released, it was a very big deal, mm -hmm. right? No burning. Yep. When the uh, ortho or penta spilled in Sturgeon, Missouri, that resulted in one of the longest trials, civil trials in American history at the time in, in the 1980s. Um, and uh, there was no fire. It was just this trace contamination in the chlorinated chemical. So there's no, there's nothing to compare this to. There's, there's no, there's no precedent. For, for, do you, do you think in, in America that this is worse than the, uh, the 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 Teflon situation with Dupont? Well, yeah, that that film is accurate. Um, it's it's called that stuff is called C eight, mm -hmm. and Carol worked on on that film, which is one of the consultants on Carol Van Strum, my own teacher, was a consultant on that. And 
um, that too was somewhat localized. Yeah, I mean a, a, compar a comparative a comparative situation was that Monsanto, which is lo was located in St. Louis, was disposing of its dioxin waste by spraying it on a town and horse horse farms. Mm -hmm. But even that was uh, <clears throat> dust contamination. It was contaminated. It was people were getting sick, but it again was not a general release of com partially combusted yeah. byproducts with with concentrated population centers all around. Yeah. So there's uh, most most journalists have no way to wrap their heads around this, yeah. and it's part of why they're not covering it. But you know, the kibosh is put on. This by all the BlackRock owned media, which owned one yep. of the companies that owned Norfolk, the other was Chase. Yep. Uh, and I don't know what to say. Uh, we, we've just got to get dioxin testing, split samples, furan testing. They're similar to dioxins and get people out of there. And if you, you love you your recommend, children, you recommend getting just, just getting the hell out of there. If right? you can get out, get out, period, yep. done. Got it. Get out. There's, what, what are you waiting for? I mean, if you can, if you have the means to get out, if you have family with a homestead somewhere else, if you have, if you can split your family up and spread them around and get them out, do it. Because what are you waiting for? You, are you waiting for the government to say it's dangerous? You're not, you're, you're unlikely to get, ever get an honest statement about that. Yeah. And look what Lois had to do with Love Canal. Mm -hmm. That was well understood at that point. And she had to take EPA officials, officials hostage and call the White House, now they'd have SWAT teams. Yeah. That was in a whole other time and place. Yep. You know, it was 1978 or 79 or, or something like that. And it was President Carter. Not, not, it was, that was bad enough. He was a trilateral, he was the first trilateral commission president, you know, put in by the Rockefellers. Mm -hmm. But this, the situation is now a thousand times worse politically. And what, what, what would you say to the people who would, would say that you're being an alarmist surrounding this, that, you, that you're being extreme? I would say, show me some dioxin samples, and then we'll talk about whether I'm an alarmist or not. I'm applying the precautionary principle. It's the guiding principle of people who work in toxins, which is you assume the worst until you have reason to believe something else is true. And this is, this and, is the thing we have established already that dioxins are harmful. Oh, uh, yeah, by, yeah, by 70, 75 years. The, yeah. the studies go back to the 1930s. They didn't have a name for it. They didn't know it was making people sick. But this is an extremely well well-developed issue. It was developed at Times Beach, Missouri. It was developed at Love Canal. It was developed with the Vietnam War veterans. It was developed in all the places where Agent Orange was manufactured, which were a, a, a disaster. And then there have been PCB releases in uh, Bloomington, Indi Indiana, in, the, in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, too. I mean, there's one deposition of, um, of, of the, tra the, the Transformer Test Division foreman named Ed Bates. And he said in his deposition, he told me this on the phone, that he went to a hundred funerals for his men, a hundred funerals, and they all died of what he called head cancer and lung cancer okay. before he put together in his mind that the chemicals they were handling in the transformer test division factory in Pittsfield were what was making the the people sick. And then they came home and they washed their clothing with the family clothing. They washed their work clothes because the, the because Westinghouse GE and Monsanto were saying, no, don't worry. It's perfectly safe. Mm. It's perfectly safe. Don't worry about it. It's not, it's called inner teen, inert, inert teen. That was the, I think that was the uh, Westinghouse brand for PCBs. So the, 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 there's a playbook here. And I think the people of East Palestine need to get with the people who know the playbook. Mm -hmm. who know the government playbook and who know the citizen playbook and, and know how to do this, who, who know the steps that need to be taken. But they're not necessarily going to get full cooperation or much cooperation from the people of East Palestine who think, well, I don't know, everything looks the same, basically. But it's if you've ever had a flood, it's like a slow motion fire. It's really bizarre where, you know, where like it's just sort of rising up and then like everything depending on the flood, either everything below the attic or everything below five feet is, is ruined. It's like the place burned down, but it's still there. Well, this is like the place burning down, but everything looks fine. Yeah. And you don't want to think so. And, you know, I've got a 
couple of beautiful custom guitars over there. I wouldn't want to leave those behind here. I, you know, even my pots and pans and my books, you know, nobody wants to hear this. Yeah. And that's why it shouldn't happen. And, and that's why we need to make sure it does not happen again. And there need, the, the federal government needs to put a billion dollars into this today. Mm-hmm. And they need to get them out. They need to be building a huge FEMA camp uh, 100 miles away from this place and giving people the option to get out and, and live there and support them and feed them. But this is not a time in, in American history where that, that seems possible. No, no. Yeah. And I mean, as we're flooding billions of dollars towards uh, improving wars and infra- well, f- towards the Ukraine war, but also $40 billion is what the federal government spent on infrastructure and education for vaccines. So, oh, $40 billion yep, for $40 infrastructure billion. on vaccines for infrastructure ah! and yeah, impoverished communities and uh, for education, brainwashing, on yeah, brain, brainwashing. Yep. Basically, little mini death camps. Yep. Come on, line up voluntarily. Look, it's good. It's good for you. Yeah. It's, it's well, so good. these are the same people who are telling us that dioxin is, is good for you. Yep. You know, I said in other interviews, one of the things that had my head messed up about COVID at the beginning was I was used to covering the, doc, the, the government that said that dioxin is as dangerous as weak sunbathing, right? Mm. And it, you know, and they put the PCBs on your Wheaties and the governor the governor going to Ohio to drink the water. And then suddenly they're coming out with a thing they're saying is like the worst thing in the world, mm-hmm. COVID, SARS-CoV-2, yeah. without one stitch of evidence to that it even exists. support that claim. Yeah. So it took me a while at the outset of that to flip because Fauci was always talking about how safe everything else is. And now suddenly this, this virus is a claimed virus well, anything people thought that claim virus was, you touch your FedEx package, ooh, you could get it from touching your FedEx package. You, uh, you're, in, you're in the wrong place for five minutes, ooh, you could get it. All of that is how we should be thinking about dioxin. Wow. That, the, that would be the appropriate response for dioxin, except for the part about moving the people into their houses. That needs to be going in the other, in the yeah. other direction. <sighs> Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to not feel helpless. Yeah. It's I mean, really, like, uh... really hard. I'm at least fortunate that I can respond. You know, I can get into action and I can, and I can do something. And I believe my coverage resulted in the Ohio senators, U S senators writing to the EPA demanding dioxin testing in the, in the community. Mm-hmm. So we went from basically like uh, Neil, Neil Donahue, a professor at Carnegie <coughs> Mellon, had one quote, he wouldn't talk to me. He wrote back, he wouldn't talk to me. So it was one quote until I wrote my piece two weeks ago. And then suddenly, except for the corporate press, the issue was everywhere. So I at least feel like I can make a difference. It's the only reason I'm not going completely insane now. And it's the only reason why I haven't gone insane many times in my life, because my whole life is oriented toward responding to these things in a way that relatively few people do Uh, but i assure you i would explode if i had to hold it all in my goodness yeah 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 it's tough again like i said because on on this show i'm sure i have people listening in from ohio and i don't like to be fear-mongery i don't like to leave people without hope but when it comes to a situation like this that that is unprecedented uh it's important to interview people of course like you who are extremely knowledgeable on this and I mean, my God, yeah, I, I, I got to go with what Eric is saying here. If you have the means to get out of that place, get out. Like there, there's really nothing else to do at this point. Look, at least get your kids out yeah. and your pets. Mm. You have relatives, maybe. Half yeah. people have relatives who can take their kids and their pets. Because the lower your body weight, the worse it is. Because everyone's exposed to the same level. So mm-hmm. the less body weight you have, the, 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 the quicker it affects you. What would you say the, the radius adult, is to get out, though? Like, like I, It's hard to know. Yeah, It's very hard to know. Definitely I haven't even Palestine. studied a map of the area. Yeah. Um, but certainly anything immediately downwind. But when the, I, I read the quote on Facebook of the guy who said, well, I went into my man cave to smoke a cigarette, and I opened the window, and I sneezed 50 times. 
And he said he was 180 miles to the west, to the in west. central Ohio, to the west. Wow. Central Ohio. So this is the law of diffusion. Things go from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration, yeah. right? You put one, you take a bowl, put one drop of food coloring in it, and the, the whole bowl turns light pink, mm -hmm. right? So things diffuse. Yeah. I mean, um, every, every, my new BFF is a, one of those stick vacuum cleaners. Mm -hmm. So every night um, at around 11 o'clock, I, this is an old building. So I, I run around the whole my whole apartment and I and I well I'm it's like snow plowing especially at night with the headlight on the little vacuum cleaner yeah. I can actually see what's getting picked up so we live in a very dusty universe mm -hmm. and the dust is going to be the primary means of spread especially when the ground dries out mm -hmm. so though some people have avoided being in hot spots right now there's going to be movement of soil and dust per perpetually there's going to be uptake through food products. There's going to be diffusion through the water. I don't know what Cincinnati is going to do for water. They, they say they've closed the intakes. Now, one positive thing is carbon filtration will help get it out of water. Okay. What do you think reverse osmosis could help too? Or? Well, I don't know about that. That may not be able to help, but I talked to my source on this is Dr. David Carpenter at SUNY Albany, okay. who's a, one of the, one of the last, and I, he's one of the people I need to call. He's, his specialty is PCBs and salmon. Okay. So there's a few people with expertise in PCBs. I came up through this issue through the PCB route. Most people come up through the herbicide route mm -hmm. because it was mostly in herbicides. But when I talked to David Carpenter some years ago, and I asked him, Do, does carbon filtration work for PCBs? He said that it does. And if it works for PCBs, it's likely to work for dioxin. But that's only going to take out one source. One source. And there's unlikely to be much in water, but we must test the water for everything else as well. Yeah. So they're, they're, they, don't know if they're, they don't know the extent of the situation. And they're doing air monitoring for vinyl chloride. And they're saying, oh, look, it's perfectly clean. <sighs> Right out of the playbook, yeah. right out of the playbook. Yeah. Go drink water. Governor goes and Mike Regan goes, the, uh, the, the, the phony head of the EPA goes and glad handles the old folks there and drinks water and they all toast with their paper cups. Yeah. That's right out of the playbook. Yeah. It, at SUNY New Pulse, the college president came and spent the night in one of the dorms to show everyone how safe it was. And she brought her grandson's teddy bear which I'm sure was put into a hazardous waste drum on the way out. Yeah, for sure. But it's the same bullshit. Yeah, we'll yeah. come drink the water. We'll, we'll spend the night. Uh, any, anything to glad handle the, the situation. But ultimately, when people get sick, that's going to be the ultimate test. The problem is some will get sick right away. Some will get sick next year. Some will get sick in 20 years. Some will get some their, their children will get sick. Well, that, that's their the grandchildren, scary part about this. As yet unborn. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's passed through mitochondrial DNA through the maternal line. The mitochondrial DNA gets passed down the mother's side. And so it is, there's two modes of genetic damage. One mode is ordinary DNA and the other mode is mitochondrial DNA. Mm -hmm. That's the powerhouse of cells. Mitochondria. Yeah. So I, well, wish, the, the, I, I wish I had something more I could say. I, I would say do not fall for these home remedies that are going around that people are selling detox remedies. We're not there yet. You know, we, we, we need, before we start detoxing from dioxin, we need to keep the pressure focused on that area. And we need to force these public officials to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I'm also for calling for anyone with the meekest conflict of interest to get the hell off the case. Yeah. That would include Mike DeWine who should resign from office for this and get somebody in there who's got some competence but he took money from Norfolk Southern mm -hmm. and they're the ones who convinced him that they had to do the dump and burn operation rather than a pro proper professional recovery operation. Mm -hmm. The other last thing I want to cover on this is uh, in October, I texted you and I was watching this financial guy on YouTube and he was talking about an impending financial crash in the next week. And I was like, ah, I don't believe it. Let me text Eric because he's uh, really, really, really tapped into astrology. And I also want to preface this by saying that 
and I talked to you about this on the phone, Eric, I, I tend to avoid anyone who is claiming to be tuned into astrology and are outsourcing to it, but you come at it from a very, very, very grounded perspective and you're extremely mm -hmm. knowledgeable. So, so with that, I texted you and you said, Nope, not going to happen. There's not going to be anything happening in October. Uh, I don't know what will happen, but February is looking to be a little bit crazy. So could you touch on the astrological implications for what just happened in East Palestine? Well, the, the chart for the derailment is, is a classic accident chart. Mm -hmm. But it's also there. There's also it's it screams two things. One is some kind of a high intensity, widespread impact accident. But the other one is a an environment of complete and utter deception. I can even show show you this. Well, this is why I'm asking this because you literally said February when yep. I asked, and this happened okay, on well, February third. I mean, I'm I'm. I mean, watching this for years, coming um, coming for, for years, the big thing that's happening is that we are on the very brink of a whole new era opening up. Mm -hmm. So I could I could show charts, but let me just talk about it. So so Pluto is about to change signs. It only does that every couple of decades. The last time Pluto changed signs was when it was uh, entering Capricorn in 2008. And look what happened in 2008. Yeah. Pluto entered Capricorn and then like, 15 minutes later, the banks start collapsing. Mm -hmm. So Capricorn is about banking and, and structural elements of society. That's and the, all the news of Pluto through Capricorn has been one collapse and failure after the next. And we are seeing this with a complete and total regulatory failure. It seems like no one actually has jurisdiction over this. DeWine refused federal aid to the area, refused to declare an emergency so that the feds could declare an emergency. What's that about? Yeah. So we've seen it's Kali Yuga stuff of complete and total corruption. Yep. So there's Saturn's about to change signs. It that's going to take us out of the COVID era into the next era. Pluto's going to change signs, and that's that's entering Aquarius, and the, the the realm of Aquarius is the realm of social patterns, and where digital meets social patterns, and where the individual confronts the group. And so it is major game on when Pluto, this kind of unstoppable force, enters Aquarius and sends this shockwave through known reality. That's that's in a, about a month from today. Saturn changes signs on 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 March seventh, um, and then Mars, after seven months in Gemini, we've all been looking at Mars up in the sky. Enters uh, enter, enters Cancer. That's another. Um, personal is political intersection of the public and the private realm. So that's a major theme is the intersection of the public and the private. But when so many planets change signs like that all at the same time, particularly with Pluto involved, the whole world changes. It's a whole new world. That's what we're looking at. And there's been this world built where now everything is run through the digital realm and the digital realm, as demonstrated by quite a bit of studying past charts, is kind of its main processing place is, is Aquarius. Mm. And I do, I do mundane astrology. I've been doing that for about 25 years. So I've done thousands of charts of events, war starting and the space shuttle disintegrating and the history of the entire NASA program and all of its accidents and the history of all of nuclear power and every war that started. Cindy Ragusa, my research partner have done probably major investigations into 10 to 15 mass shootings. Wow. Um, and so we study these mundane charts, charts for wor worldly events. And I entered that work as an accredited professional journalist who had been, you know, through numerous, numerous tours of duty by the time I ever touched an astrology book. Hmm. And so I've been able to bring to bear the, uh, the, you know, the, the kind of, uh, skill these kind of military skills i have of being a journalist with deep and long study of astrology through these charts so we are looking at major sea change and what this is happening now at that moment right before another major wave of change comes in and they're, they're going to have to cover this up one for, in their minds they're probably meeting in davos planning and scheming how to how to cover this up and they would do it with another type of event yeah another diversionary event or 
rationing the internet or or some financial shock i mean this is not going to be good financially food food is the bottom line well that's what i was going to bring up too is is that ohio the farmland in that area and the so distribution seventy five thousand farms yeah that's I, I can't believe i'm even saying this i mean i love buying from farmers i love farmers i'd much rather eat from farmers than from the supermarket yeah but now this should never have happened, but it can happen 99 more times. It can happen one more time. But we're, we're in this world that's been ravaged by this kind of globalism and Kali Yuga and, and this basically total corruption. Yeah. Total, total corruption. So all we can do is our part and our part matters. Mm -hmm. If enough people get behind East Palestine and the entire region, we can make a difference. Yep. We can force them to do proper testing. We can force them to evacuate if we stay on them and people don't cave. Yeah. And we see that they're, look, you and I are on this kind of rarefied, in this sort of rarefied community of people who've gotten to the bottom of the virus issue. Yep. And you, we, you, we see, you know, Bill Houston, our friend Bill Houston, keeps the, the list of half-truthers and complete deceivers yeah. <laughs> uh, on, on this issue. And, and it's like, you know, 200 of them and 20 of us. Yep. Yep. I would imagine it's the same for this too. Maybe even worse. Well, I'm glad my work is circulating. That's a very good sign. And the positives are comment, the comments are positive and I'm, I'm not being accused of being an alarmist or an astrologer, yeah. you know, um, that's, that's positive. I mean, people see, read the comments. People really seem to be responding and, yep you know, 500 shares of, of, of a thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to get this resource into the hands of journalists, which is going to ultimately amount to people like you. Yep. Yep. To be I, educated. Uh, yeah. Well, I was going to say, and I'm, I'm happy to share like any of the resources that you want me to put in the show notes, I'll put in the show notes so that they're all. Well, let me say it out loud. Uh, two, I've got them going in two places. Planetwaves.org is a shortcut. We programmed a shortcut to my Substack. stack. Planetwaves.org. Um, and then planetwaves.fm is my radio program where this conversation will go up a little bit later on along with yep. a full, you know, a full update. I'm going to, I've been collecting stories all week and I'm going to basically read the news onto the air and talk about my experiences with this. And, um, you know, a couple of things are important. One is we not let our lives be completely dominated by this. It's very hard when you're right there at, at ground zero. It creeps into your mind after a while when you start to wonder really if everything you're touching is not eating touching eating and drinking is not contaminated yeah it's going to start to get into their minds they've they've got this problem and when their dog can't walk you be like hmm what's that about yeah. uh so it's hard the closer you get to keep a sense of humor of, of any kind but it's necessary or you'll you'll never you'll be worn down in in a minute um, and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to try to keep my content a little bit diversified and not, you know, have this be 100% of my coverage. We need, it's going to be for a couple of weeks. There's, there's yeah. no way, uh, ar around that. And we don't know where this is going. I mean, but you, you asked me about astrology and, you know, when we, when we let's talk again in one month and we, yep. we will see the extent to which it's all new players and an all new ball game. And what, you know, what is going to come in to supplant this in some way, but they're doing a good job of keeping it out of the press. I've got to hand it to them. They're, they're, yeah. they're all those operation mockingbird shills, uh, throughout the, uh, throughout, throughout the corporate media, they're doing their jobs brilliantly. They're, they're earning their $10 million paychecks. Yeah, they are. Yep. Yeah, they are. Well, thank God for people like you, Eric, this was, I, I think it a very important conversation to be had and i will be sure to push people to more of your resources on this and again because you're the knowledge-based expert on on dioxin and environmental issues so thanks for yeah that. thank you i mean i've been dragging these documents around the world with me well all around the united states basically shipping them around and paying for climate controlled storage and mm -hmm. se sending them off to be scanned and putting them up on two different um major databases they're on document cloud and they're on toxic docs. So 
all of the most important documents. But we've all, all of us in this little teeny group of people on the dioxin issue, me, Peter von Stackelberg, Carol Van Strum, we're kind of the last people left. I mean, people are getting old and they're retiring and they're dying. All the old time lawyers are gone. Um, but, you, you know, I, I'm starting to feel like I, I've been waiting for this moment. It's kind of a Forrest Gump moment. And I, I, but I never thought dioxin would be would be back in play again. I, I'm, I was wondering, well, when I'm gone from the planet, who's going to get these documents? That's that's the last last time I moved them and set up a beautiful facility for them, um, which Chiron Return pays for. And if you're a friendly person, but you can come and see them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I never I never it never seriously occurred to me that, that something like this would would happen. I see the trains go by. I live in rural America too. I see the freight trains go by and I'm always thinking, yeah, I wonder what's in those things. Mm-hmm. Well, now we know. And unfortunately, now we know what... we have, we have to have appropriate response plans. I'm, I'm texting police chiefs in my area and people in County government saying, can I come in and talk about your emergency response plans? I'm not getting very many responses back. Yeah. So Alec, thank you very much. Yeah. Really thank for you, helping Eric. get this out. Absolutely. I know you've got a lot of listeners who love and trust you. And you have astrology fans in the audience. PlanetWaves.net. Yes, absolutely. PlanetWaves.net, yes. the one and only original Planet Waves. PlanetWaves.net is where my astrology coverage of this will go and lots of other, I think, reassuring, grounded, um, better than therapy astrology. That's my ministry. That's that's where I, you know, that's that's where I kind of bring the word of Jesus to my readers is through the horoscope column so awesome on that note eric yep plus thank you alec Uh, eric the guy that i just had on um he is the probably one of the foremost experts on uh environmental toxicology and uh and on dioxin and Mm -hmm. From his stance, this is like a massive, 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 massive issue, like humongous, like one of the worst environmental disasters, if not the worst in U.S. history. Um, And essentially, he ended the recording by saying that he recommends anyone who lives there just get out. That's 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 what he said. Yeah. Um, So I I just want to hear. Go ahead. Oh, I was asking, where does he actually reside? Is he? He's in, he's in New York. Or... He's, he's in New, New York, York okay. but, but he's familiar with the toxicology of everything that just happened with sure. the, like with the vinyl chloride and the other substances sort of just being blown up and then being dispersed through the air. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to get your perspective on what's gone on. And you live, correct me if I'm wrong, eight miles north of East Palestine. Yeah, so I don't know if you saw a clip of like Joe Rogan um, or maybe just like one of those viral videos that was going around. There was a man kind of shouting at the sky saying like, this oh, is yeah. Darlington. Yeah, yeah, that's the town that I live in. Okay, um, got it. It's depending on what direction you're coming from. Mm-hmm. It could be anywhere from like 15 minutes to like six minutes away. Okay. So I'm about six minutes away. I pass um, the contaminated stream, uh, Little Beaver Creek. Um, there's four streams that are contaminated and I'm familiar with them all. So I am very close by. I got the evacuation notice and we did. We ended up leaving for a couple of days. Um, so yeah, my experience so far hasn't been anything like I've seen going viral on the internet. That's not to say that it's not happening. I 100% believe that there are dead fish, dead frogs, you know, dead uh, chickens and other livestock. But, you know, when I drove back from the evacuation, I expected to see coyotes maybe in my, I've got, oop, I've got 14 acres, you know, and I've done a couple laps and I haven't found a dead animal. I haven't seen anything like that. So um, my experience has just been very different, but the cloud did pass by. Um, what was overhead. that experience like? 
Um, well, so, you know, from the time in which we got the notice that there had been a train derailment, it had already been two days from the derailment. Wow. So the derailment happened on February 3rd, which was a Friday. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about it. And once again, I'm only a few miles away. I didn't know about it until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Wow. So that was like a whole, you know, a whole weekend, essentially. And even at that time, you know, this alarm was going off and it just said there had been a derailment. And I was like, oh, that stinks. Like, I'll have to change my commute. And it wasn't until the next day at like three o'clock, I got another update and it was like, you have to leave. If you don't leave, you know, you could be arrested. There will be shrapnel. It once again, didn't even say anything about chemicals. Mm -hmm. Um, it just that there's going to be shrapnel. A that's controlled... such a weird, like thing, yeah. specific thing that's related to explosions. So exactly. They're like, yeah. if you're in a one mile, and I'm not in that one mile radius. I'm more of like four to six miles, you know, somewhere from the there. site, from the actual site of where the derailment. Yes, from the actual happened. site, and okay. um, and I've driven by it multiple times um, since then. But yeah, just like from the beginning, I don't know if it's incompetence, everything that's happened, but from the beginning, none of this was handled correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I have gone, you know, as you were just speaking with somebody who knows the toxicology and stuff. I've gone to the rivers and a lot of the rivers that I've gone to, you know, I've put a stick through the water and there's been no indication of those rainbow, um, I don't know. Some I of the videos that we've seen, like, well, like, spells. yeah, where, where there's rain. I, I even saw one that right. was, I think in, uh, after a rainstorm in Kentucky, there was a bunch of oil on the ground or something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, I'm not, once again, I'm not a chemist. I'm just a resident. I'm, I came out here to be like <laughs> kind of insulated from stuff like this. And sure yeah. enough, it found me anyway, but, um, just depending on where you are, it does feel less dire than a lot of the things that we've been seeing. Yep. Um, but I have been through the town and people are walking around. Um, everybody's really friendly and it, you wouldn't know that something really happened if it weren't for the signs that say like free water and stuff. Um, yep. but yeah, I haven't, we have bird feeders with, that are full of birds. We have deer. Like I said, we hear coyotes screaming every night. So the experience that a lot of people are posting about, um, once again, I'm sure it is true, but I am in quite a close proximity and it doesn't always align with yeah, totally, some totally of what I've that. seen. Yeah. So and, I'm not and, saying and this is, not, mm -hmm. well, th this is the tough thing about something like this there's so many factors at play there's so many unknowns with it i mean it's a it's a completely mm -hmm. novel situation that we mm -hmm. haven't dealt with uh at least not in anything that i've i can remember um in modern history in the united states and i just think that everyone's experience is going to be varying um to to very large degrees across the spectrum i mean there, there there's wind involvement there's weather patterns there's uh water and 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 how it seeps into the groundwater and then some areas it may not and then sort of the routes for dispersion of water there, there's so many things at play here levels of health uh even even time is is a huge mm -hmm. factor here um because that's right. what Eric was describing when I just interviewed him. The uh, he used an analogy of of a flood of of a flood that slowly creeps up and rises, and that's that's kind of what he shared regarding the health implications of this. Is that it will affect generations to come, and it may not be directly apparent immediately. Um, right. And you know it's. <laughs> It's, it's such a tough thing because like I said, there are so many factors, even just in the health realm of, okay, it, it, we know that nature is healing. We know that we are self-healing, self-regenerating machines. We know that nature is the same. We know that the earth is the same. And it's like a toxic assault like this though, will it have 
short term or even potential long long term implications on the land and it's like it's so hard to tell but then we have to go back to what we know about dioxin and uh, eric has covered that extensively i mean as an investigative journalist specifically covering for the last 30 years 20 years however long he's been doing it uh toxicology related to dioxin which is what was formed as a as a result of this toxic plume and this, this spill um and and that it has massive health implications and it's just a, such a a tough very nuanced thing with so many unknowns so i have a question mm -hmm. though regarding the the general sure. feeling of of people that i i guess is the best way to describe it truthers that are in the that are in the area that you live in like what are what is the general feeling amongst people that are that are truthers which would be my audience i guess <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, I, I am, you know, your audience. Um, my feeling is that everything turns political. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens anymore, it's no longer like we all come together and, you know, we are looking for a solution. It's like we're all looking for the conspiracy in it, I yeah. think. Yes. Um, there's a lot of people who are just scared because you know, you think about, okay, so it's been politicized. And then um, even some of the things that people are saying online, you don't know what their motivations are. Yeah. You know, maybe they're looking to um, be a part of something bigger than themselves. Maybe they're just scared. So they're saying or repeating what they've heard or, yeah. you know, reposting a viral video. A lot of the people that I've been spending time with, a lot of my friends, what would be your general audience, we're all pretty like calm about it, I yeah. guess, because we look at it <laughs> for better or for worse. It's like, well, this is just a really big example of the microdosing that we get on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like everything is poisoning us if you yeah. think about it um Very like depending on the cookware you use yeah. the sheets you sleep under um the air you breathe the water you drink if you don't have the right filters it's like this is just a huge kind of in your face um it feels kind of inescapable and that's what's scary and especially since things are politicized you have people saying you can't trust the epa because um, you know, they're part of the big profit and, you know, Northern Southern or, um, I'm sorry, Norfolk, Norfolk Southern. Southern. Yeah. yeah. They have their own people coming in to test the water and soil. So you can't trust them. And it's like, well, I'm not a chemist, you know, I, I can't test my own soil or water and I guess it could get an outside source. It will cost tons of money. So really myself and my friends it's like we just do what we can on a daily basis mm -hmm. you know you can get the reverse osmosis <laughs> you can do all the tiny things ultimately you know nature does have a way over time of correcting itself if there has been a chemical spill like there has been that is so detrimental that like it's kind of inescapable i mean what are you to do at that point yeah, you know, and, you and that, best, that's what Eric it's... said. Eric said, like, mm -hmm. if, if it were up to him and he could make the choice for everyone, and of course, like, I'm a promoter personally of voluntarism. I don't think Eric would disagree with that either. But right. essentially, he said that his recommendation is that people just, just leave, just get out and tell mm -hmm. that there is extensive uh, tests done and independent tests not mm -hmm. what you're describing where Nor Norfolk Southern right. is saying, Hey, we're going to test the water and everything. Oh, it's all <laughs> yeah. good. You know, um, and I don't trust exactly. And I don't trust the EPA mm -hmm. whatsoever either. And that's not even coming from a conspiracy lens. It's more so I just know the and not only the corruption, but the incompetence of any three letter mm -hmm. agency inside the government. I mean, I freaking worked for one, the department of defense, and it was <laughs> absolute nonsense, uh, when I was, mm -hmm. when I was working for the DOD. And so it's, it's just that with something like this, because of the nature of the corruption specifically, though, of three letter agencies, especially those pertaining to health or the environment, 
uh, I think what Eric laid out makes the most sense is where you have two independent labs receive samples from a number of locations and mm -hmm. test the level of dioxin and then also mm -hmm. keep a third sample with a chain of custody on that sample. So, you know, well, chain of custody on all samples, but so you know that if the other two are interfered with in any way, shape or form, you have a third one as a, as a backup and you mm -hmm. do that all independently. And I think that's the most appropriate steps here, especially again, conflicts of interest between even Norfolk Southern and the government, and then also the EPA itself, um, not wanting this on their plate right now. I mean, it's, it's, right. it's pretty clear. So yeah, it's just a, it, it, this is a tough one. And, and I, I shared yeah. this with Eric, like, and I think you said, you mentioned you tune into my show. I don't like to be fear mongery. I don't like to uh, promote unnecessary amounts of fear. I'm very solutions oriented in most of my podcast mm -hmm. episodes, but because of the nature of the media blackout, so to speak on this, I mean, this should yeah. be front page on every single mainstream news source sure. and they're not covering it hardly at all if mm -hmm. they are covering it. And I just wanted to get to the bottom of this. So I, that's why I wanted yeah. to interview you, someone who lives there, and then mm -hmm. also um, interview Eric, who has, is familiar with this. So, Right. Well, the first couple of days, you know, there was no information. Like I said, it took, um, it took days for me to even find out that there had been a derailment. And from there, the only thing I could find was like boots on the ground, citizen journalism, uh, just residents of the town who were yeah. posting things. And um, I think it was like Maxine Waters. She posted something about it being East Palestine, the Middle East. And I was like, oh, my God. oh no, this is already like turned political. <laughs> it's only day three. And now we have like Trump brought him to this. Like, oh, what is God, happening? Yeah. And so. As soon as I saw that, I was like, this is going to turn into a mess because especially with what's happened over the course of the last couple of years, you know, people are very skeptical. So yeah. it's like, this could be a huge thing. You know, it's traveling down the Ohio River, which supplies water to millions of, you know, homes. And you're thinking, okay, we're in the heartland where there's so much agriculture and livestock and everything could be, you know, poison. Like we just, in soy, like soy is in a lot of the foods that your average consumer, mm. you know, it's a filler, it's just everywhere. So, you know, you're just thinking of every piece that this could possibly touch. And um, it, it could be like a huge thing, but everybody, you know, it's either somebody's crossing their arms saying, I don't believe any of it because of everything that I've seen, which, you know, rightfully so we've, had a hard time these past couple of years deciphering yeah. facts and For fiction. Sure. You know, it's like not really an even split anymore. It's just kind of one or the other. And, um, but then you have the other side that just is posting these viral videos saying the world's going to end. And yep. there has to be something um, more resolute and more honest. But how do you get to that when you're just a regular citizen? So I am going out and you know, I have 14 acres of land and I'm just walking it daily to see what I can find. And I'm driving to the streams and um, it's it's really hard to say because, you know, something's happening. You just don't know what to, you know, to what extent it's happening, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Again, I I don't really have much else to, to to say on this. Of course, I'm not there, and I'm not as familiar with dioxin as as Eric is. Not even close. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just a this is a tough one. This is just a tough one. It's it's yeah. it's really hard to determine the best possible recourse and how to to go about preserving health. Um, with a situation like this, but I thank you for, mm -hmm. for being willing to come on and just share your perspective on it. Are you, are you going to take any steps to like, do you have any plans to, to do anything differently regarding this situation? Um, as of right now, you know, we actually just moved here. I moved from Vermont, um, here last August. So like <laughs> I've sunk all of my money into this home and like, yeah. You can't see our countertops. Like, where are we doing them right now? I mean, we're in the middle of a renovation. So, and you're on 14 acres. Um, so I'd imagine you have a homestead of sorts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and, like, yeah, you know, uh, we were really planning on making this something. So, yeah. we can't just pick up and leave. But, you know, I'm 
lucky that I have family within a two hour drive. So Mm -hmm. like when I did have to evacuate, I could, and we have space there that we can um, be, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. Um, I don't know our next steps, you know, we kind of, or at least myself, I'm a planner. (laughs) So, and I don't rely very much on outside sources. So Mm -hmm. I am prepared as I can be in terms of water, um, uh, soil. I'm not sure, you know, we'll have to get our soil tested. We have well water. Yeah. We'll have to get that tested and we have people coming in, but it's not, they're not easy to find, you know, they're, it's not a big community of people, especially out here. So it's, it's definitely a a spooky time because you just, you don't know. And so many unknowns. That's know, the, that's the tough trust part. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and exactly. then it's the, it's the balance between what I said earlier, knowing that the body is self-healing, self-regenerating and that like our capacity mm-hmm. to heal is far greater than we've been led to believe. And then like our belief surrounding something, fear has a tremendous impact on our health and, and, and the negative and uh, our, our alignment of our, of our psyche towards a positive result can actually bring about a positive result. And I'm very fascinated with Mm -hmm. German new medicine. And it's just like, there are so many factors at play here and it's, uh, yes, we can overcome and nature can overcome, but it's Mm -hmm. like, how big of an issue is this really? It's so hard to determine right now. And like you're Mm -hmm. sharing, there doesn't seem to be anything going on. It's like, let's hope to God that that is the case, that it's, that the Mm -hmm. fallout isn't as bad as it is as, as, as Eric is saying it is, but again, I got to go then back to, you know, he's, he's an expert on this topic and I hate outsourcing Mm -hmm. to experts, but it's also that Eric is a very critically thinking, genuine, uh, Mm -hmm. down to earth guy. And it's, there's, yeah, this is, it's, this is just a tough one. It's so tough. Right. Yeah, it is tough. So, I mean, I just, I hope, you know, I have a lot of resources, and I am kind of like holistically minded, yep. you know, I'm like a very spiritual person. So mm-hmm. um, the community that I live in is not necessarily that way. East Palestine or East Palestine, however you want to pronounce it. A lot of those people are just your average, humble, like kind working family. Yep. Yep. You know, I don't think they have the same resources in general or the same mindset as you yep. or I. Um, so it, it really is a sad time because a lot of people are struggling and, you know, it's not an affluent community by any means, but mm-hmm. like, it is a community of hard workers that like, yeah, it, it's just, it's really sad for them. It'd so, be tough for them to pick up and move if this did, it, it, it's, it's just the, the future implications mm-hmm. of that are just, I mean, even for you, like you said, you, you just planted your mm-hmm. roots here and you have 14 acres, you have a homestead going, you're doing renovations right. and you were, I would imagine trying to get away from some of the nonsense <laughs> that was occurring in the Northeast. Yes. And you're like, okay, I got mm-hmm, laid now. And it's like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. man, yeah. man, man, man. Well, and this is happening all over. I mean, like if yeah. you're looking at any of the social media stuff, it's like there's contamination happening you know, in Florida, there's plants being yeah. going up in flames and there's yeah. Arizona trucks being, you know, knocked over with some toxins in the air. Now it's like, yeah. where can you go? So really at this point, it's like, okay, so I'm in this ball of fire or I move over to there and that ball of fire. So really it's just got to be, it has to come from within. I yeah, guess, you know, to. you've yeah. got to take care of yourself. Amen. And just Amen. figure it out and build a community and resources of <sighs> yeah. people and things you can trust. Amen. So. Completely agree with that. And uh, I, I think with the nefarious nature of this agenda, which I don't like to call attention to that much, mm-hmm. but it is, there is a nefarious agenda at play here, I believe, on a, a massive scale across the earth. And I think that they're going to be throwing things at us from all angles for lack of a better term. And, um, we just need to do whatever we can to remain resilient, remain grounded, remain, Mm uh, aware of what's going on, not spiritually bypass and pretend there's none of these dark things going on, but within that still remain optimistic and hopeful and take deliberate action to continue just becoming the most badass version of ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. So, That's, that's all we really can do. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Just be proactive when you can and 
start where you are. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Yep. Awesome. Well, Chelsea, thank you so much for having me on. This will be good. Cause I'm going to have like Eric's our discussion and then yours follow that and it'll people will be able to see just sort of all sides of this conversation um and and form their own opinion that's that's the that's the most important thing here is yeah. being able to form your own opinion opinion on it so yeah. yeah that's great thank you so much for having me and it's been a pleasure talking with you thank you thanks 